So you're going to grid your greens. Today only we're going to work with this leather leaf. Again, then we're going to switch to um, Salal, Seeded Ukes, um, uh, Pittus Porum. We're going to have wax flowers, all these beautiful things every day to use. But for today, we're going to use this because it's real easy to learn on, all right? So how do you do it? You're wondering, right? When people come into a room, my flowers are floating on this room of vase, whether it's 550 or 500. Nothing touches the bottom of the vase, because when it does, it has a very stiff look. So you're going to grid. This is architecture. I'm telling you, most of my job is architecture. I'm going to remove most of the stem, and I'm going to do this. Oh, draw a picture of the vase and put all stems land here. And then put another parenthesis here and another one here that says clog the drain. All stems land here and clog the drain. I know you're thinking, what the is he talking about? So here we go. I take my first piece of green and go across the vase and slightly down the drain. I take my next piece. I overlap it. See how it's overlapping? and down, slightly down the drain and across the vase. I take my next piece and overlap and down the drain. I take my next piece, overlap, spinning my vase and slightly down the drain. I take my next piece, overlap and down the drain. So what have I created? A six-pointed star. Do you all see that? Right? Six-pointed star. Now I want you to write this down. Six in the lower deck. Four, three, and the kisses, all in the upper, up in the penthouse. Six in the lower. This is in the lower deck. Got it? Right? Now we're going to put a four-pointed star, a three-pointed star, and a kiss right down the middle. Watch how this goes. Still, removing most of that stem. Notice nothing's touching the bottom of my vase. Right down the middle in the penthouse. One, don't pat this down. Everybody wants to pat them down. Leave that standing up. Take your next piece. Overlap. Two, take your next piece. Overlap. Three, take your next piece. And these lower brackets have to go below that rim of that glass. So you're always tucking it down that drain. Now, I, I did a six, a four, and now I'm going to do a three. If this is too big, you can clean it up a little. Now we leave a little bit of stem on because we do have to go into the water a couple inches. And I'm going to do one, two, and three, and last but not least, I was taught this 20 years ago and I never forgot, the kiss. Right, remember I said, were they growing this way or that way? They were growing this way, so use them that way. So you put a little bit of stem on there and right down the middle, the kiss. If it looks a little loose, I'll say kiss it again. Two more pieces together and right down the middle. Look what happens, it's pretty already, isn't it? Looks like a green plant growing in a vase. When you've gridded your greens, look at the magic. Wherever you stick a flower, they automatically stick instead of flopping all over your vase. Interesting, isn't it? I've created a holder in lieu of that foam. Got it? Now, write this down, 6-5-1. Here we go. One and a half, you can cut it right on the edge of your table. If this is sitting on top of my vase, one and a half would be right there. This is what lay people do. They hold them like this. You need to learn to hold flowers like a writing pen. Dear John, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't hold it like this. Hold it low. Underneath the greens, you're going to do six in the lower deck, and you feed it across the vase. It's hitting right over here. One. Next flower. One and a half times the height of your vase. Whoop. Right there. And you can fit that one in. Two, it's like placing six chairs around your dining room table, one and a half times the height of your base. Three. These are all the techniques you're going to learn in the school that every designer does every day when they go to work and they have to produce gorgeous flowers all day. It's based on these techniques. Four. So one and a half, six of them, one and a half times the height of my vase. Right there. And my last one. Number six, right there. If I put a piece of glass here, I'd have a coffee table, right? Then I tweak them. Six. What's the next number I gave you? Five. Twice the height of my vase. So right there. And there's going to be a little campfire of roses sitting. If this is the penthouse, right, everybody? It's going to be just slightly off the penthouse. So if this is the penthouse, it's going to be just slightly off the penthouse. You're going to get your hand in there, and you're going to feed your flowers into these greens. And look how perfectly that stays. Notice it's not touching the bottom, so I can adjust it. There's one, 
twice the height of my vase. If there's any thorns, you can pick them off now. Get that in there, too. Twice the height of my vase. You can put a little campfire right here, five roses sitting around. Get them away from that lower six, two. I mean three. Last one, twice the height of my vase. Four. And twice the height of my vase. Pick off any thorns that are going underwater. And five, right? What's the last number I gave you? One, I call it run up the flag. Two and a half times the height of your vase, so you're not gonna cut very much off. Nice angle cut right there. Boom, look at that, perfect roses every time. Just like in the movies, six dash five dash one. Right, now a lot of florists would send it out this way, but I'm training you to be the top designers. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna re-green this whole thing following that formula. You're gonna start all over and re-collar it all around. One, you're gonna do the star within a star again, all around. Two, again, all technique. This enables you to do perfect flowers every time. If you pick up flowers from the grocery store and you have 10, do five, four, and one. If you have two dozen, you just double up the rows or add more rows, right? It's not just for roses, you can do this with any flower. To have perfect flowers arranged in your vase. So notice I'm putting this nice collar. Then where am I going next? Upper deck cover up all those naked stems in the upper deck, like that. Put some nice greens, put a little greens up in the penthouse even. Notice the leaves come up to the head of the flower. Do not go beyond the flower, start covering up. The greens should come up to the head, not covering. So now we have a beautiful dozen roses arranged and you play with them and tweak them a little bit. You know, some roses are a little curvy, they don't sit quite as well. And you have this beautiful vase arrangement like this. And now the guy yells, don't forget the baby's breath. So you say, well, I have some very fragrant uh, wax flower or lepto that you can add. So whatever filler you're gonna add, you're gonna do it the same way. Right here. Remember that first piece of green I put in here when I started? Let's say it was right there, in between the roses. One and follow the same formula. Two, that's why all my students design beautiful work all the time, because it's easy to do this. This is what you do as a top designer. You follow these patterns. I'm getting these all into the water, yes, but I'm doing this, feeding, feeding your flowers into your design. You've got to feed them. You try and do this, hold it like this, and you're fighting, and you're breaking them, and they're coming out like this. So hold them low like a writing pen, dear John, and get your hand in there and find that air hole. It's like surgery. See that? Oh, there's that hole. There's where that kidney is. I gotta pull out. You just get it in there. Um, so what am I doing now? I'm putting some in the upper deck, right? I put some in the lower deck, put some in the upper deck. Nice refined piece. Just tell the story of the rose bush, right? Remember I said the top rose. What's on the top of a rose bush? That rose reaching for the sun, trying to survive. That's the story you're telling. If it looks a little open, I'll even peel it down to tell the story of that bud trying to survive by reaching for the sun. So I'm gonna put a little filler in the upper deck. I'm gonna put a little bit in the lower deck. I'm gonna put a little bit all around the decks. And when I'm done, look how pretty. You have a beautiful vase arrangement. If you can do this, you're very employable on February 12th, 13th, and 14th of every year, they will find you, don't worry about it. We do hundreds of these on Valentine's. What's the number one flower in America? A rose, yes. There's a hierarchy, we're gonna talk about that later in the semester, when you design bouquets, you line them up according, it's like a poker hand, the queen of the show, right? We're gonna talk about that later, so there you go. Beautiful flowers every time. Pretty, right? That's what you do, and you say to your driver, there you head. Gonna put the delivery tag on there, and out it goes.